Welcome back, everybody. This is Drew Dumont. I'm here with my friend Sarah Cunningham. Sarah, you've played a lot of sports. You had been involved a lot with academics throughout your whole life. Can you talk a little bit, starting off with sports and how you first got into sports when you were younger? Yeah, so I started off going to Mount Royal Academy. It's a small private school in Sunapee. And they didn't have a whole lot of sports to offer. So one of my friends was transferring to Sunapee High School. And that's when she was like, oh, why don't you come and play sports here? Because there's a lot to offer. So uh, my friend did soccer and softball and I decided to join the team. And that's when I picked up those two sports and I didn't love them. And I ended up getting into swimming because my grandfather came to me and was like, have you ever tried swimming? And I was like, no, but I love to swim and I always swam at the lake when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, and I joined the Upper Valley Aquatic Swim Team, which is a travel swim team up in where I live here in Lebanon. And I loved it. It got me into the best shape of my life. And to this day, I still am on the travel swim team and I'm going to do it this fall, my last uh, season there. That's great. So with swim, it's a little bit different from any other sport because you're in the water the whole time. So there's difference in, I'd say, training and everything with that. So I've heard you talk in the past about like different ways to train. How do you train both during the summer, during the off season, stuff like that? Yeah. So during the off season, I try to do a lot of resistance training. So that could be weightlifting um, or using the treadmill. A lot of out-of-the-pool exercises to kind of get stronger. Um, and then also before our swim practices, we have dry land training. Um, so that really helps like make your muscles stronger um, for the meets. So what is dry land training? Is it the whole sport involved water? Yeah, so obviously we have two hours of swimming like practice. But beforehand we do... 45 minutes of out of the pool exercises and that's okay. strength training. All right. Interesting to learn about. So throughout like a lot of different sports, you start off with, you know, learning one thing and then you learn how to do the same thing at a higher level or you learn different concepts. Swim is, you know, obviously a very unique sport. So what are the different concepts you learn from your when you're younger to, and you build on that how's that change when you get older and do a higher yeah level? so you start with little drills uh, swimming drills and then you build up your stamina mm -hmm. um, and also depends if you're doing long distance training versus short distance training so you're training a little bit differently um like i'm a short distance swimmer and i love the quick races I'm not one to do like in a thousand <laughs> or a five hundred. Um, so. So what is the difference? Like you talk about, you know, you have long distance swimmers and you have short distance swimmers. Do you think there's like a difference in, you know, the way that they're built or the way that they think? Or is it just kind of an, anybody's own preference? Um, I think it's like how you train. Obviously, if you train doing more laps, then you're going to be more of a distance swimmer. Uh, but if you train for those quick, you know, 50 sprints down and back, then, you know, it's very high intensity. So that's the difference. What does it require for you to be a strong swimmer? What do you need to put in both um, physically when you're working on your craft and mentally to prepare yourself for swim meets? Yeah, swimming is so mental, I will say. Um, it requires a lot of discipline and you need to show up to practice as much as you can uh, because if you don't like going four days without swimming you can get so behind in the practices and like it's really obvious especially when I went on vacation I came back and I had to sprint it was so tired I want to talk a little bit about coaching and maybe highlight some of the different coaches you've had and what works well for good coaching techniques and, you know, just different approaches that you've seen different coaches have. Yeah, so there's some coaches where they push you a lot um, and then there's other coaches where they let you decide how much you want to work at it. Mm -hmm. um, I say, like, I have a mix of both. 
obviously um, my coach pushes me a lot, but it's honestly up to us. If we show up more, then we're going to get more out of it. For sure. Yeah. I think that's a common theme throughout a lot of different athletics. So you, you talked about how you're, you've been on a travel team for a number of years. What's that experience like? Is it similar and or different to like a lot of different other travel sports? Um, well, I've never done any travel sports outside of swimming. Uh, it's definitely different than the high school swim teams, I would say. It's very rigorous. There is a very competitive culture. And sometimes you get people that aren't very nice in a travel swim team because it's very competitive. Um, so yeah, just very rigorous. Okay. What did you learn the most from swimming? Uh, definitely work ethic and it improved my mental state definitely um, and it's always good to after a long day of academics or something to go in the pool and swim it it's just cl clears your mind I would say for sure so what are your highlights your big takeaways from swimming and what's your advice to anybody else who's interested in trying swimming or trying to figure out if they're like a long distance or a short distance swimmer or any of that yeah, um, well, I feel like a lot of people don't think about swimming. A lot of schools don't have swim teams. Uh, they mostly do swimming, like, in the summer or something. Um, but, yeah, I really recommend it. It's, it's really good. Um, but, yeah. All right. So, academically, you've had a lot of academic success throughout your whole, you know, academic career and everything. Can you take us through that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, this is a kind of a long <laughs> academic fine. history. Um, so I started going to Lebanon High School, and uh, I graduated one year early, actually, to do full-time college. And um, so I was only there for three years. Uh, it, was, it was great. Um, I was able to join the swim team there as well, and I was the swim captain. Uh, for my junior year, so that's my last year there. I'm gonna stop you there. What about being a captain? What role? Like that's a obviously a big role on any team, but how specifically for swim is that different or unique? Yeah, well, I mean it's a leadership role, uh, and my teammates voted me in, so it felt really good. Um, but yeah, so you like you plan events, spirit days. Uh, it's it's really fun and you know, you're like a leader of the team. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we'll go back to your academic career and everything. So you graduated a year early. That's, that's a pretty amazing accomplishment. So what are you interested in now? And what are you doing now? Yeah, so I started taking uh, E-Star early college courses in 2020. So <laughs> it's been some time. Um, and I started taking them at community colleges all over the state. Uh, online classes from White Mountain Community College, uh, Lake Region, and now I'm at NHTI, and I'm doing full-time college there for this year, and then I'll transfer, um, and I'm working on my associate's degree. I have been since 2020, um, and I'm a part of uh, the I Club at NHTI. I highly okay. recommend that. Um, what, what degree are you going for? I want you to let everybody know. Yeah, so I'm doing liberal arts right now. Uh, that's my associates in liberal arts. Um, and then I'll transfer for my bachelor's and I'll do international relations and international business. What motivated you to decide on international relations and international business of all things? Um, well, I, so this summer I actually went in, uh, to a Harvard summer program. And I stayed there for seven weeks and I took a business course, um, intro to entrepreneurship and then a psych course. Uh, I was really drawn to business and I love like the whole entrepreneurship thing. So I really want to pursue that in college. Um, but international relations, I feel like it gives you a really multidisciplinary you know, it's just like a it, bigger world view. Yeah, um, yeah. So okay. you take a bunch of different courses. There's a lot of history in international relations, um, and yeah. For sure, yeah. 
I mean, that's all pretty cool information to learn about. So as far as you've gotten to this point, where do you see your future going and what's your advice to anybody else who would go down a similar path? Um, well, so in terms of doing early college and stuff, I really recommend that for anyone. Okay. Obviously, you're not in school as much, you know, and you might not see your friends as much. Um, but it's a really interesting track, especially to colleges. Um, I'll be applying this fall, so I recommend it for anyone. What are some of the challenges that are unique to that path, and how do you deal with them? Um, I would say socially, it could be a little difficult uh, because you're not seeing your friends on an everyday basis all day, you know, for those six to eight hours while you're in school. Um, but it's really important to make time. Like, I've met a bunch of really nice people at NHTI uh, that I'm friends with now, and she's actually influenced me to become, like, a student ambassador there. Um, and I've joined the I Club Literary Club there. You should also join that too. Okay. Too. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. All right. Your role as a student ambassador, what's that like? Yeah, so it's a, another leadership role. Um, so you give tours to incoming freshmen and you're kind of the voice of the school in All a way. Right. And it's... With, usually people's first impressions of the school uh so yeah we give tours we give advice mentor to parents as well so this is a really impressive career so far i mean still young you're still a teenager and everything but what's in store for the future where do you see yourself five ten years down the line what do you want to be doing oh that's a hard question i don't know uh no um I would love to work at a consulting group, Bain or McKinsey, or maybe possibly intern at the UN. That would be wonderful. Wow. Um, <laughs> Very ambitious. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but I would like to get my master's as well, um, maybe at Harvard, the MBA program. And yeah. Anything you'd like to add on for advice or anything like that? Um, so, like, I know my track is really different, like, not many people do this type of thing, but honestly, it's been the best decision I've made, and, um, I mean, Drew knows he's, him and I have stayed in contact through all of this, and he's been with me. Yeah. All right. Hey, Sarah, thanks for stopping by. Thank you.